everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer. I am so excited today. I have been quarantined and not able to work for over two months now and tonight we were told that we can get back to work. So I have lots of work ahead of me, um, lots to do and I'm going to be super busy and this is a time when I'm usually super busy uh, doing lots of videos or podcasts for Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day, which is on June the 1st. I do go live on my Facebook page every year on June the 1st, and I just share experiences. And um, so I'm hoping that I'm able to still be able to do as much as I normally do with posting. Um, I may be posting a lot of other people's videos and things like that to my Facebook page while I try to catch up over um, in my other job but I'm super excited to, to go back. So I want to say thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot to me. You do help my channel and it does mean a lot to me to be able to get awareness out. No matter who you are on the spectrum, I really am glad that you're here. So I wanted to talk to you about um, a narcissistic person in the fact that it's so disheartening when you are in a relationship with someone and you find out they are a liar. And I've talked about this so many times and it comes up because it's just part of being a narcissistic person. They do not know who they are and they basically mirror and become other people around them. And so they're just kind of like these different types of people depending who, who they need to talk to. They are people that love to get lots of information and they have just enough information that they can almost talk on anything, but they don't know everything. It just appears that way because they're always studying people. So they're always just trying to get as much information as they can to study up. And it may even be that they meet someone and they know that that person is into, let's just say, um, working on car motors. I'm just gonna throw out something like that. So the next thing you know, they've studied as much as they can on working on car motors, just enough so that they can say that they know a lot about it as well. But, um, they they really don't know who they are and but they talk a big game and sometimes it's really hard to point these people out because they are quite charismatic but they are very vulnerable people down on the inside and um, it depends on the type of narcissist that you are depending on how everything manifests and so the more you study about narcissism, you'll learn a lot about that. There is a lot to learn. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to understand, but it's even a lot to even accept. But there'll come a point if you have been, whoever you are watching, there'll come a point where it may just a light bulb may go off. And hopefully if that happens, uh, depending on my, you know, if you're watching my channel or somebody else's channel or just reading something, uh, where you will be able to get the help that you need. And um, so that, that's the thing about bringing awareness is, you know, there is hope for everybody, right? And of course, an empathic person is gonna say that. Now, a narcissistic person, a very highly narcissistic person that has some antisocial um, personality traits or maybe even antisocial personality is going to be more of a malignant type narcissist. And they uh, do not see life they don't look at uh, life that way, and they're just going to be uh, very um, put off and want to put you down and just, you know, they'll fight back with you and try to um, outsmart you in some way and try to confuse you and make you think, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize my dryer was on. I'm so sorry. Maybe I should cut that. Oh. Let me see if it stops. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get ready for my job and I didn't even realize that. I just kind of like, just wasn't even paying attention. So I apologize. But um, yeah, so they, I forgot where I was with that. But basically they lie about everything. And when you find out 
it is like you can't even believe that you got in a relationship with someone and didn't see it. The thing is, is you make a lot of excuses for people that you care about. And you want to believe the best in people. And so when you find out everything about them was a lie, these people can lie about, and you can see it in the news. You see it if you look at um, even social media stuff that comes up or uh, reality shows where people literally lie and say that they have cancer or something like that. And they go years and they have people feeling sorry for them and giving them money and taking them food and helping build homes for them or whatever to make them comfortable. They do these things and prey on people, good people. They exploit good people, their good traits. They exploit the fact that you have hope and that you care so much. And so I know that's hard to understand that somebody would be out there and do that and actually put in all the energy to actually go through the lies like that. It's like, how in the world can they do it? Well, they're master manipulators. They've been doing it forever. So it comes naturally to them. It's not like they um, are, you know, pausing and having to figure things out. It just comes like that. They've just been lying that much. They can lie about something and it sounds so ridiculous, but literally you'll question your own self and be like, man, that sounded really ridiculous, but they just want, they just talk. They'll have you believe in everything and then they'll switch it off to something else and confuse you and just get you off topic. You know, you might later start questioning some of it, but it'll wear you out so much and then you might not want to get in an argument with them. So you just kind of let it go or whatever and they, they're depending, they're counting on that. But these people will lie about careers. They will get up and they'll get dressed and they act like they're going to work. And that they, because they can't accept that they're not good enough in some way. They could be, they could go out and do the things that they need to do to get to these places. But they're too lazy for that. I hate saying that because it sounds horrible. But they can go and work just as hard as anybody else. A narcissistic person does not want to work that hard. They want, they expect everything to come to them. And they're takers. And they make people depend on them and believe that they need them so much so that they can take from these people. They will take advantage of the elderly. They will take advantage of the church and the good people in the church. They will take uh, advantage of people in the work environment and have those people doing all the work for them. And then they will take credit for it. They will take your ideas and they will make it happen for themselves. They lie. They may even lie about their name, how old they are, what their upbringing was. They will lie about anything. We wonder... How do they keep up with their lies? A lot of people ask that. Well, they've been telling the same lies for so long that it just comes so naturally to them. Sometimes they do screw up and you'll call them on it. And then they that's when something's going to happen where it's like they're going to distract you. And then they'll blame shift. Like, don't you don't you question me? How dare you question me? I don't have time for this. Da, 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 da. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to make them mad. I don't want to make them mad because I don't know what my punishment is going to be. And so you're like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And you might still question it, but it's like, you know, you let it go. Your cognitive dissonance will make up an excuse for them. And they count on that. They count on that. They do not want people to know that they are liars. And so they bank on getting you away from your support system and you being isolated so that you're so dependent on them that whatever they say, will there's nobody else to um, counteract that and make you question it because they're not around enough or you're not around those other people enough. And ex-girlfriends or ex-boyfriends or ex-co, you know, uh, partners and things like that for work, business or whatever, they may, they're going to smear them. They're going to talk bad about them. They'll smear them in some way. They may not even tell you about those people and pretend like those people never existed and hope that the two of you never come in contact with each other. Um, unvariably, though, and this is just my experience um, with narcissistic people, um, 
the exes, if it's in a romantic relationship, will contact you. They will contact the other person if they find out about you. It's only a matter of time, but they always contact and they always want to tell you things. And it's because they're hurting too. Um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been contacted. I, I remember somebody contacting me one time who was so distraught going and was in therapy, reading every book you can think of, was just so distraught um, when they found out about this relationship that I actually had as well. And my heart went out to this part, this uh, girl. I, I really did. The first time I had heard from her, she wasn't very nice to me, but later, she, I mean, her world came crashing around her. She was devastated and she was calling me a lot. It got to a point where I did feel sorry for her, but it was also triggering and consuming for me and it wasn't good for me. But um, I really felt bad for her. So, um, because people that have been duped by someone like this, they're truth seekers and they want to go out and they want to find out what exactly was any of it real. And they just can't believe that pretty much everything was a lie. These people, um, some people call them evil and like the devil. Um, they definitely do evil things. And they do it because it's been working for them. A lot of people call narcissistic people lazy. There are people that can go move up in the ladder and there are different types of narcissists. So it really is kind of depending on the type of narcissist that you're with, but they really want to try to get things um, done easier for themselves. And they do try to have people around them that will do a lot of the work for them so that they don't have to get their hands dirty and do all that stuff. So, you know, whatever makes it easier for them. Um, but they will definitely move up the ranks if it works out for them. Um, but so I guess that does make them lazy, you know, because they have the minions to do all the hard work for them and they take all the, um, the credit. But these people will lie about anything. And if you leave them before they can leave you and discard you, or you pull, rip the mask off and expose them to other people of who they really are, that's when you are in a very dangerous position. You do have to be concerned about someone like that, whether they will hurt you or not. You may think that they won't, but these people will stalk you. They will stalk your friends, your family, your social media. They will lie to people. They will go behind your back and tell people horrible things about you. They will smear your name. They will tell people that you've been talking about them when you haven't. They will try to turn people against you. They will have complete malice. They will do anything they possibly can to get attention. They are attention seekers. And if they don't get the attention that they are seeking, they can actually crack. A narcissist cannot feel ignored. When they feel that, that is any kind, that's narcissistic injury. They need to be uh, top priority. They need to be center of attention. They need to be the center of the universe. In their minds, they're that special. So why on earth would somebody not treat them that way? And whoever isn't, is there, there's something wrong with them and what's up with them? And they, they really look at life differently. And so it's just a different way of looking at life for them. It's like you think that they're looking through the same lens as you, but they're not. And it can be very frustrating dealing with someone like that. They just, unless they're ready to just let something go or, uh, I mean, they'll fight you to the death just about. Some of them will fight you to the death. You have to be very careful, especially if you've left them 
and they didn't have another narcissistic supply in in line and who and there is different types of narcissistic supply there's um I've talked about this on this channel so you can look back at different videos and you can look this up for other people to from other people but like HD Tutor talks about the different types of supply um, on knowing the narcissist here on YouTube but there is the non-intimate partner um, primary source and then you can be the intimate partner primary source so let's just say you're the intimate partner's primary source and you ditch out you're gone you realize what they are and you're like they're crazy I'm gone I'm done and they're not expecting it and they're like whoa their fury is going to go they have a narcissistic injury that needs to be released they need to heal that in some way so they're going to take it out either on you if you're there the non-intimate partner um, pr uh, primary source other sources of supply so if you know if you are around someone and they seem fine and then all of a sudden they're snapping off at you and you're like what the heck is wrong with you like who are you right now five minutes ago you were fine They've probably gotten a narcissistic injury from someone, maybe got a text, maybe got an email. Something happened where they went out and somebody, something happened, you know, while they left the house and they came back in a really bad mood and they're snapping at you and being ugly at you. That's what's happening when stuff like that happens. You may not understand it, but now that you're aware, you can be a little more alert and kind of pay attention to those things and look for the patterns. Look for those patterns. So anyway, um, just know if you're with a narcissist, they're lying. Anything that comes out of their mouth just about is a lie. On occasion, you might get a little bit of the truth, but I promise you if they're a narcissist, 99.9% .9 of the time, everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie because they're kind of a made up person. It's a facade you're basically with someone who's kind of like a robot that's just being fed different things from different people that they're picking up and that's who they're becoming. And sometimes if you pay attention, they actually respond like one, especially if you pay attention to them within a group setting. Sometimes when you're one-on-one, -on -one, but in a group setting, sometimes you can really see it because they're gonna be, they're going to respond seconds off from everybody else. So I hope this helps. I know that it's really confusing and frustrating. I know it is, but it's information that you need. And I'm just gonna give it to you in little bits and pieces. There's so many people that are talented. There's psychologists that I think are really good. I think Dr. Romney here on YouTube is amazing. She is amazing. And um, so I think you should check out her channel. She can really um, explain things really well psychologically. I'm just somebody who's been through it and kind of giving you the, low, the, the, lay, the lay of the land from someone who's been through it. But I highly recommend therapy. Therapy is excellent and it can help you so much. So once you learn all the things that you need to learn to answer your questions about the narcissist, then you can do the healing that you need to do when you figure out what type of personality you've got. And most likely, might, uh, most likely if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, you're codependent, you're a very good, sweet person, you have a good heart, you believe in hope, you believe that you can fix things, you believe so wholeheartedly in the best in people. And those are traits that the narcissist loves about you. They do, they adore those things about you. But the very things that they adore about you will eventually, they will hate you for. Because they don't have those things. It doesn't come naturally to them. And so when they look at you, all they can see is what they're not. And they need to hate you. It's horrible but it has nothing to do with you so you can move on and you can be happy. Until next time, bye.